good evening and a very warm welcome to all the esteemed dignitaries and distinguished delegates it is indeed a pleasure to have you all here for the inaugural session of this unique conference <laughs> larger than medicine wellness for doctors we would have a series of webinars on this concept this idea was conceptualized by dr sudhir shah and i'm sure each one of you must be eager to know from him the final aspects of this unique concept and his thoughts about the same before i hand over the proceedings to him i would like to take the privilege of introducing to all of you our course director padma shri professor dr sudhir shah dr shah is associated as a professor and head department of neurology at nhl medical college and director of neurosciences at sterling hospital ahmedabad he is also a consultant neurologist to his excellency the governor of gujarat and an advisor to the world yoga foundation he has authored six books and has several national and international publications to his credit he has been a recipient of many prestigious awards like the padma shri in 2016 dr b c roy award in 2018 fellow of indian academy of neurology in 2018 and the global visionary award so to take the proceedings further let me invite professor sudhir shah dr shah please thank you very much chinder bhai can i have the slides please i want to welcome all of you on this august platform and i want to particularly thank dr anish chandarana and madam joshi for being there and accepting our invitation as speakers <coughs> at the outset i want to thank current pharma people particularly shri anup bhai dikshit le amish bhai arun bhai shri chintan bhai shri others for helping me out acquiring this novel webinar series that is a doctor centric series wellness for doctors as as you know the title is life is larger than medicine which itself is self explanatory i want to thank congratulate and applaud enough for uh, the noble act the act of kindness on the part of torrent because there is someone out there who is thinking for doctors wellness quality of life longevity and happiness for the doctors next slide please this is not about some drug or molecules that will benefit a company this is not one more routine kind of webinar series i hope and i know that the lecture series can and certainly will change the lives of so many doctors which are very hard working and sincere people daily there are a lot of webinars and we have learned enough i appreciate them but as you can see hardly any webinar any person talks or discusses about physical mental emotional or spiritual health of a doctor or or general well being of a doctor there is a sincere need to discuss for doctors the financial management time management relationship management etc nobody talks on ethics communication skills soft skills etc and there is hardly any talk which has guided us regarding literature music art which books to read how how do we enjoy our life etc etc and let alone diet exercise yoga meditation etc so i took an initiative rather a bold one to discuss all this on some unique webinar platform and torrent has come forward for this and that is why i want to thank and applaud for them academic webinars are good i compliment them but these days you know there are little in excess you will agree i mean uh, i sort of tend to think how does it matter to me or to my patients if i don't know about some rare genetic disorder or a rare new molecule with limited efficacy and acceptability is it not okay to skip such webinar and invest my that time 
in my personal health, my happiness, and family time. एक आद मॉलिक्यूल लेका एक नई दवा नहीं पढ़ लिया एक आद नया सिंड्रोम नहीं जान लिया तो क्या फर्क पड़ता है? But if you don't know how to communicate and appreciate your spouse, your loved ones, and if you don't know how to manage your time, how to talk about, how to talk your patients, you will certainly mess up with your life. And to tell you and remind you rather, as you know, the and on an average, a doctor lives 10 years lesser than other people. How bad is our quality of life, our happiness quotient? We are not good at all these things. We are very good in advising people, but not good at managing our own lives. On the other hand, everyone has expectations from a doctor. We have a hard life full of struggles. And look at the attitude of public and government and all those agencies. So, oh, next slide, please. Slide, please. So, if you, so, so, together with the team of Torrent, I have designed a few webinars which are for doctors to improve the quality of life, wellness, peace, equanimity, and other things. So, like physical, mental, emotional health. Next slide, please. Next, and how to create balance, how to prioritize our life, how to manage the expectations, how to create energy, how to time our things, and how to do well-being for our self. Next slide, please. So, keeping all these things, and of course, to discuss the financial stability, professional excellence, humanitarianism, accountability. Next slide, please. Ethics. So all these things together we will discuss on this unique platform and I hope uh, all of you will enjoy, take part in that, guide us for the, you know, your requirements and maybe participate actively in question answer session. Next slide please. So today we have uh, wonderful speakers and Madam Shilpa Joshi and Dr. Uh, Dr. An An Marwa is our uh, moderator. I think, uh, next slide, please. So before I hand over to our moderator, I would like to uh, introduce Dr. Marwa. May I have this introduction slide of Dr. Marwa? So the flow will be like this. I will introduce Dr. Marwa. Then uh, Dr. Marwa will introduce our two speakers. That is Dr. Anish Chandarana, cardiologist, and Dr. Shilpa Ben. And then uh, we will take it further from there. So Dr. Tivin Marwa, my personal friend, he is the moderator for today's session. He has a lot of... Uh, Achievements in his life he is a senior consultant endocrinologist, diabetologist, the honorary associate professor and head of department of endocrinology at SVP IMSR Ahmedabad. He is co author in RSSI textbook, he is involved as a principal investigator in clinical several trials. He has presented several papers on international and national platforms. His whole academic career has been bright. He was topper in uh, our SSC examination, and he has been also uh, the president of uh, Ahmedabad Association of Physicians. He has received AMA award from Chief Minister of Gujarat. He, is, uh, he has been honored by Chief Governor in Gujarat State for his services to mankind, and a lot of other things you know he has to his credits. I think with that uh, humble introduction of the subject as well as concept and the moderator, I would like to hand over mic to Dr. Uh, Tivin Marwa to take the proceedings further. Thank you very much. Unmute your mic. Tivin, please unmute, unmute your mic. Yeah. Uh, good evening, dear friends. Uh, first of all, I'm a Extremely thankful to Dr. Sudhir Bhai for his kind words of introduction and also his great initiative to start this program series of webinar. Uh, the best thing is that the person who is taking this initiative, 
a person who practices all these aspects of professional life or physician and he is leading this series of webinar that's a big big you know blessing for all of our physicians who are going to participate and hear in upcoming programs i know dr sudhir bhai since almost two decades and i know he's such a kind hearted noble hearted person having multifaceted interest and his emphasis is always on happiness and professional excellence at the same time uh, he had lived up to this expectation which he had charted for himself and expected from others so first of all my heartiest congratulations sudhir bhai for thinking and conceptualizing this event and putting into practice and i am also thankful to uh, torren for accepting his proposal and working it out and today we are having two eminent speakers uh, first i am going to invite dr silpa joshi uh, she is going to speak on diet the importance of diet for physician the title of the talk is we are what we eat jaisa aahar waisa hi jeevan waisa hi vihar waisa hi vichar our friends we know dr silpa joshi very well she has been a speaker in many of national and international platforms including ada idf and there are many achievements to her credit but i would say that the biggest achievement she has in her life that she has been course director for national diabetes educators program for more than a decade and she has educated more than 3000 educators who are taking care of thousands of diabetic patient importance of education and diet is so much in fact they are the pillar for diabetes management so a person who has led this campaign needs lots of appreciation other than this she is having many other achievements she is secretary current uh, for all india association for advancing research in obesity she is vice president of indian dietetic association and i i believe that almost all physicians who are in the field of metabolism diabetes and nutrition they know her very well and we are very fortunate to have her as a speaker uh as we say ladies first uh, uh we are starting this program initiated by dr sudhir bhai with uh, dr silpa uh, who is nutritionist a family maker and also a great dietitian so over to you dr silpa and i'm going to introduce dr anish chandrana when uh, uh, he is going to speak so now over to uh, dr silpa ma'am uh, good evening everybody uh, thank you so much for the kind words of introduction uh, dr marwa and uh, such a great initiative and uh, i am so proud to be part of it thank you dr shah for inviting me and thank you dr chandarana as well thank you dr marwa and thank you so much torrent uh, for having me here now i'm going to be speaking about we are what we eat and this is something i believe and i think i should be able to convince you in next 20 minutes that that is the truth i'm going to give you certain amount of scientific evidence to prove it but most of my slides let me share is made up of lots of different kinds of foods which i have made and i have photographed so um put on your seat belts and let's go on a culinary journey to actually find out what is it that is important to us so you are what you eat is a said by ludwig feuerbach who was a german uh, philosopher but also it is very very deep rooted in our culture where our vedas even bhagavad gita mentions importance of eating satvik aahar for satvik vichar like dr marwa said so it is very very important to have good diet not only to have good body but to have good thought process and that is something that yoga when you practice yoga in its totality that is what it it actually teaches you it is not only about asanas but it is about aahar vichar and aahar everything together so food is everything we are it is an extension of nationalist feeling ethnic feeling your personal history your province your region your tribe and most importantly 
your grandmother it is inseparable from those from uh, from those from the get go so this is said by somebody from the west but it is so true even when we go on mount itlis we still want to have a indian thali so that is a nationalist feeling it's your personal history so you have something which is very very favorite to you and that is what we call as comfort food and typically it is your grandmother's khana or your mother's khana which actually makes you most comfortable at most of the times <coughs> so actually food is a inseparable entity from yourself and that is something which we need to go so what is importance of good nutrition so good nutrition is fundamental to health and for achieving sustainable development because only healthy people can achieve su a sustainable development some progress uh, despite some progress the world is not on track to meet globally agreed goals and target for nutrition we have more than 149 million children who have stunted growth but we also have a childhood overweight and obesity almost increasing everywhere and therefore suboptimal diets are responsible for one in five that is 22% of adult deaths globally so if you could just look after that one thing you could prevent deaths in about 22% of adults malnutrition has a important is a has a important common denominator for systems that fail to provide all people with healthy safe affordable and sustainable diets and in a country like india we see it more often than not the economic social environmental cause of inaction will hinder the growth and development of individuals and society to come in decades and therefore prevention of malnutrition especially in first 1000 days has a lifelong health and economic benefits <clears throat> so what is the importance of understanding nutrition the importance of understanding nutrition is to prevent and management of chronic diseases is well known inadequate nutrition or over nutrition has been proposed to account for about two thirds risk of chronic problems like type 2 diabetes cardiovascular disease so on and so forth health problems have been both related to specific nutrients over and overall meal pattern with inflammatory biomarkers which generally accompanies those uh, foods or eating patterns that are associated with disease but with this i am coming to something which is very important which is malnutrition now most of the time when we talk about malnutrition 95% of people only think about underweight stunting etc or wasting as malnutrition but malnutrition is a condition associated with undernutrition such as wasting stunting and deficiencies but is also associated with dietary imbalances and excess such as overweight obesity and diet related non communicable diseases the coexistence of contrasting form of malnutrition is called as double burden of malnutrition and i think exactly that is what is happening in our country we face a lot of we see a lot of malnutrition among interior in interiors among certain states which are less economically um, well to do but we also see a lot of malnutrition in form of obesity and overweight and diet related non communicable diseases as far as richer states go so if you look at icmr in that data which is coming up you will see that richer the state more is the prevalence of overweight more is the prevalence of diabetes more is the prevalence of all other non communicable diseases and that is something that we have to see now this is a very nice slide which has come from lancet which was published last year where you will see that initially india had lesser uh, burden of double um, uh, double malnutrition burden was lesser but as time has progressed this is in 1990s this is last year's data you will see that we have increased burden of double malnutrition wherein overweight uh, because of double malnutrition has increased to greater than 20% and what they are saying is very rapidly changing diets and food system of most of the low and medium economies are where there is a energy imbalance which is causing weight gain and this is the reason why there is so much of malnutrition or obesity in in countries like india which are developing or um, um, uh, you know so what is the reason for double burden so while there are other reasons that is we know that nutrition is a important driver of bur uh, double burden of malnutrition we find that there is a growth in retail companies and food chains which are providing these ultra processed foods now whenever we talk about 
ultra processed food i know this is a very august audience but whenever we talk about westernized diet we only talk about pizza and burger but my dear friends ultra processed food does not mean only pizza and burger you will be surprised to find that the most of the foods that we indians eat who have never even touched pizza and burger is also ultra processed and let me walk you through that so ultra processed packaged food which are refined in carbohydrate fat salt sugar and are relatively inexpensive and often are ready to eat are the foods which are actually causing a rise in obesity so look at these there are various trials done wherein they have shown that actually when people stop taking ultra processed food and take in real food and what do you mean by real food real food means ghar ka bana hua sada khana dal sabzi roti chawal dal bhat rotli shak to be very very uh, to put it in gujarati you will find that there is actually people gain much lesser weight and few people actually lost weight when they were having simple homemade food but you would be to to your utter surprise ultra processed food has become a part of your diet it has become extension of yourself where you will not realize that you are taking in ultra processed food and we have seen that there is lot of role of ultra processed food on you know lesser development or malnutrition even among first thousand days of children because if mother if a pregnant woman is consuming ultra processed food naturally her infant is a, her uh, uh, fetus in her womb is exposed to it so what is the definition of ultra processed food ultra processed food is a broad that is rap rapidly changing food category that include multiple foods prepared by variety of method containing mad madrid of nutrients that is less nutrients and more of food additives now look at these these are ultra processed food carbonated soft drinks is what they have said that also includes non carbonated one so sharbat also comes in sugar sweetened beverages sweet fatty or salted packet snacks includes all indian nashtas chakli chevda this that and other everywhere candies that is confectionery chocolates mass product production of breads and buns all breads white brown blue black purple whichever color it is it is still ultra processed cookies and biscuits it includes all biscuits and for my doctor colleagues and friends it is also includes mari biscuit because this is what we get to hear from patient doctor ne bola mari biscuit chalta hai isliye i am addressing it to the doctors that mari biscuits are also ultra processed and home one home made ones too pastries cakes in lockdown facebook was flooded with post of women making cakes at home without egg with rava with this with that cake is cake cake is ultra processed food sweetened breakfast cereals fruit yogurts which are so much in fashion and energy drinks powdered instant soups it also includes indian mithais like chikki and ladu too okay prepared uh, non vegetarian items so on and so forth so remember i have my following speaker dr chandarana is going to talk about this but just to give you a idea and i'm sorry dr chandarana to pick up couple of slides about your talk before you start but remember any ultra processed food is difficult to walk out so for example if you drink a 355 ml bottle of sugar sweetened beverage it may be a sharbat it may be a is a carbonated beverages the consumer would require to undertake 1.5 mile of walk or run at least for 15 minutes and remember india and china are two top markets for sugar beverage manufacturers and consumers both and that is the reason why this is happening so look at this this is all our ultra processed food how many of us are walking for two and a half hours after eating a bag of chips or after eating two samosas how many of us are walking for 15 kilometers for that matter or after eating a burger how many of us are walking for 5 hours none of us are doing this so this is something that we need to so these are total calories which are impacting now this is a map again very famous slide which is showing carbohydrate consuming countries across the world and india is one of the highest consumers of carbohydrate look at it 70 to 75 percent so this is and we know what is very unique to indian diets indians eat high diet carbohydrate diets but also indian show high postprandial blood glucose excursion which was not shown by their caucasian counterpart but what are we eating ha huh? this is what we call healthy food right upma poha dahi bhat uh, 
uh, dosa, idli, only carbs, nothing else. And we have seen that in start study that whether it is diabetics or non-diabetics, everybody is only eating carbohydrates in India. Indian diets are high fat and high carbohydrate diet. We have also seen the pure study where actually, which was published last year, which showed that actually carbohydrates are related more to mortality due to all non-communicable forms where cardiovascular disease more than actually fats and even more than saturated fat. So we have been, you know, harping about not consuming fat for over a decade to find that carbohydrate is the real culprit. And therefore, low carbohydrate diets became very, very fashionable. Because the study came in, people started not eating carbohydrates. But this was a very, very nice paper published again in Lancet in 2018, where it was shown that yes, low carbohydrate, uh, the high carbohydrate diets cause high mortality, so do low carbohydrate diets. So there is a U-shaped relationship between carbohydrate intake and mortality, and your carbohydrate should be about 50% of your diet. How much are Indians eating? 70%. All of us. We are all Indians and we all eat same food, however aware we are. So what we need to do is decrease carbohydrate. Now, how will you decrease? Look at this normal meal. This is something I made at my home. This is idli, homemade idlis and homemade sambar and homemade chutney. Now, if you have to eat this meal for a diabetic or to lose weight, instead of eating half a vati sambar with four idlis, which 99% of us do, if you eat one idli with two bowls of sambar, automatically your carbohydrate percentage drops. It's not a rocket science. Can I eat another idli? Of course you can. You can eat another idli with another two bowls of sambar. Can I eat the third one? Yes, you can, but you won't be hungry to eat because four bowls of sambar would have filled in your stomach. So dono kaam ho jata hai. Wife doesn't have to cook a different meal. At the same time, your blood sugar gets controlled. How to prevent weight gain? Whenever you are eating rice, look at a protein option. So this is Rajma here. So if there is rice, try to eat a protein. Even if you're eating a fruit, a bowl of fruit is a good option. But when you add nuts to it, it's even, it becomes even better. And believe me, you don't always have to have almonds. You can also have singdana, that is peanuts, which are cheaper alternative as good. So you can have that as well. Now, this is rajma chawal. Again, this is food from my home. When we say rajma chawal, rajma has to be more than chawal. It is even said that way. So if there are two proteins, liberal proteins, limited carbs and plenty of fiber, same food if you change differently, you will find that blood glucoses don't rise. So there is a huge role of legumes in our diet and the role of legume cannot be um, minimized. So what has happened is in our public health, public food distribution scheme, rice is distributed for two rupees a kilo. Wheat is distributed for one rupee a kilo. Unfortunately, dal is not distributed. And we are seeing a explosion of diabetes epidemic in our country. So I think having dal or pulses in every meal is important, not only because it helps you to manage blood sugar, but it does so many more things. And there are there is a lot of it to show it actually helps you to develop your intestinal gut flora, gut microbiota. The starch makeup is so different. Therefore, your blood sugars rise slowly. Your cholesterol is in control and also your um, uh, dietary protein increases. Now, this is a question which all dietitian is asked. How to choose a right fat? What is a healthy oil? So remember, a choice of healthy oil is one which is low in saturated fat, high in unsaturated fat, desirable ratio of omega-3 to omega-6 between 5 is to 1 to 10 is to 1. So this is the role of, saturated, uh, role of the various fats on diabetes and CVD. And if you see, saturated fat actually increase insulin resistance, decrease sensitivity, increase triglyceride, LDL cholesterol, also increase HDL, but LDL increases. And therefore, what is recommended is you could have diets which have cooking oils as MUFA or PUFA. Now, only problem is PUFA has a property which is as good as MUFA, but the problem is Indian cooking involves a tadka. And tadka involves heating oil to 200 degrees. When you heat oil at that high temperature, polyunsaturated fat, the bonds start breaking and the oil gets destroyed. And hence, what is recommended in Indian cooking is monounsaturated fat. Where are you getting monounsaturated fat from? I'm sorry, it will come to you. Um, where are, these are different fatty acids and different properties. 
these are non glyceride components of oil other vitamins and minerals which are present now these are sources of fat look at these these are oils which you should contain uh, eat groundnut oil palm oil mustard oil grape seed oil olive oil so on and so forth now this is a question again asked he ghar ka ghee chalega kya desi ghee chalega kya if you look at fatty acid composition of ghee these are various ghees available in the market are gokul nakoda etc gates so on and so forth even home desi ghee look at the saturated fat content it is about the same total saturated total saturated fat content is about 75% so you do not want to have too much of ghee because it is too much of saturated fat same is the thing with butter the saturated fat the myristic acid and palmitic acid which are the reasons why your uh, blood cholesterol or ldl cholesterol goes up the reason that is why you should avoid consuming butter nuts nuts are very important component of diets nuts should be eaten by everybody nuts do not contain cholesterol cholesterol is a property of animal not of plant in fact if you consume nuts you help to decrease your cholesterol in your blood especially ldl cholesterol so there are lot of studies especially mediterranean diet in our country studies are done by dr anup mishra dr v mohan on cashew nuts dr anup mishra on almonds and pistachios which actually show that there is decreased prevalence of all the metabolic diseases if nuts are consumed because they also are have arginine which is precursor of nitric oxide which is required for endothelial function so consume nuts every day now these are sm small simple hacks for you last couple of slides to eat well this is called as plate partitioning method which is developed by american diabetes association the method is their plate is mine okay so this is the thali which most of us eat at home easy way of eating well is divide the thali into four parts one fourth part should be raw vegetables that is salad one fourth part has to be cooked vegetables that is bhaji different kinds one fourth part has to be protein i have put all proteins here this is paneer this is dahi this is dal and this is sprouts you can consume any one of it but one fourth plate and one fourth plate of starches it can be roti it can be rice or it can be potato potato is not a vegetable potato is a starch so if you have roti and aloo ka sabzi basically you have had no sabzi you have only had two rotis so that is something that you need to remember this is veg this is non veg even when people eat non veg it is imperative that they still eat vegetarian food order of eating is very important osama dr osama hamdi has published his paper on order of eating to control weight and blood sugar both so remember when you begin eating always begin with protein because protein suppresses ghrelin ghrelin is a hormone that makes you hungry start with a bowl of dal then a bowl of salad then a bowl of sabzi then a bowl of dahi you can again take more dal more sabzi more salad for this roti but the 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 crux of the thing is you might not even eat this roti you might be full before that so try use spoon and start eating things before that so eating is always a decision nobody forces your hand and to pick your food and put it in your mouth you have to choose to eat right so instead of calling it junk food actually treat it like junk and choose good homemade options like you know sprout bhel or this is maharashtrian dish called as thali peet so you can choose different foods which are healthy for you instead of choosing biscuit you can choose thepla lot of times aapko thepla bana ke rakho then people tell me madam hum log kabhi basi nahi khate to britania subah subah mari biscuit thodi bhejta hai tumhare ghar pe wo basi hi hota hai but if you can eat biscuit you can definitely eat a thepla which you have made with your hand on the previous night instead of choosing biscuit you can choose fruits yeah and apple is expensive i know british call it apple a day keeps doctor away because apples grow very well in london we can say guava a day keeps doctor away in fact national Nut institute of nutrition has said guava is the healthiest fruit so guava is cheap guava a day can keep doctor away again like i said adding pulse will prevent weight gain adding fiber will also help you to become so instead of eating roti you can eat roti with ha which has vegetables instead of eating plain poha you can add peanuts to your poha add organic acids like lemon which will decrease the glycemia of food 
So look at it. You know, all of us, you know, even in our medical college days or whenever, ate these powadas and endless cup of cutting chai, which was giving us a lot of calories. Instead of that, near powada wala, there will be also shinchana wala. You can buy just shinchana and have a glass of chas. It gives you half the calories. If you have sprouts, it gives you very little calories. You can also have a fruit and some soy milk. It will give you lesser calorie as compared to something which is a snacky item, which gives you a lot of calories. Now we also have options called as meal replacement, which again will help you to make choices, especially for people who travel a lot or doctors who are in hospital at lunchtime and don't want to eat hospital food. Meal replacement shakes become a very good option for making right choice. Last but not least, we are towards the end of the Shravan month and now the festivals in India begin. These are modaks which were made for Ganpati this year. I made them in my own house. When you eat, instead of modak, Ganpati is not telling you to give you the modak. You can also give prashad of fruits. So prashad can be a healthy version of fruits. You can prevent a lot of increase in blood sugar and increase in body weight. Poor perception is very important. See, this is Gujarat mein, Khakra is considered as light. It is light in weight, not in calories. Because this khakra is made from this roti. If this roti has 100 calories, this khakra too will have 100 calories. When you eat roti, you feel very bad. When you eat khakra, you don't have any guilt. So that is something food perceptions are very important. And looks can be deceptive. All these foods have same amount of carbohydrate, but look how much more sprouts and mamra you can eat as compared to jaggery, sugar, or even pasta. So try to choose food uh, wisely. So in conclusion, to eat health in a healthy way, you don't have to cook food, to cook different food. You have to eat same food in a different way. Traditional diets are great if you're physically active. Tweak traditional diets to suit modern sedentary lifestyle. Lastly, it is important to remember food is indeed a medicine, but you are all doctors all medicine have a dosage. You do not give medicine beyond the dosage per kg, kg body weight. So is food. Food is a dosage which has to be recommended and eaten only in right amount. Thank you so much for a patient here. Dr. Tiven. Hello. Yes. Yeah, am I audible? Sudhir bhai, am, am I audible? You are audible. Go ahead, please. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you, Shilpa Ma'am, for your elegant talk covering all aspects of uh, dietary habits of Indians and uh, covering all uh, subjects in a very nice way. Uh, the dishes you presented were look like not only presentable but also delicious. So it is difficult to control. You said it's your hand that uh, you know brings food to your mouth, but when the dishes are so uh, presentable, you can't stop yourself. So, so they were so mouth watering. Related to your subject, so the second talk, uh, we'll first move uh, on to. Sir, sorry, uh, you are not yeah. visible. There is something obstructing your face. Can you please do something? Oh, okay. Problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my video is stopped. Oh, sorry. Anyway, you can go ahead and speak like that. Don't worry. Uh, you are muted. Can you unmute yourself, please? Can we, uh, now, yeah, uh, yeah, I, uh, am.
ऑडिबल नो हेलो हेलो केन भाई गोएंड गोएंड केन भाई हेलो केन भाई आर यू देयर so i think he just got disconnected you can sir continue sir okay uh, all right fine uh, uh, the second talk is by my another close friend dr anish chandarana uh, he is going to speak on exercise for health and fitness a doctor's perspective as you know the whole conference or webinar series is doctor centric so he is going to focus on that aspect Anish is a very famous cardiologist, and his, uh, his present designation is that he is an interventional cardiologist, executive director at Sims Hospital, he was a former assistant professor at Institute of Cardiology and Research Center, Civil Hospital. His areas of interest uh, is ca clinical cardiology, non-invasive cardiology, as well as interventional cardiology. And he has delivered more than 700 lectures and trained a lot of medical students, and he has written three books, etc. and uh, he has participated in many research projects which have been instrumental innovating uh, very important medicines and instruments he has a brilliant academic record many gold medals etc but apart from that you know what is going to talk today he has practiced in his life i have been watching him for last 15 20 years and i am his fan for two reasons one is the level of exercise that he does and second the level of meditation he does he, so that way is a combination of science uh, physical fitness as well as uh, mental and uh, spiritual fitness so i really salute him for his all work he has been a trained vipassana student and we are doing vipassana together i am very honored that he is he has accepted our invitation so dr anish kindly take over for your talk Uh, good evening, everyone. A very respected senior neurophysician and somebody who has always wonderful and newer aspirations. My friend, philosopher, and guide and course director, Dr. Sudhir Shah. Another wonderful friend whom we have shared dais for different conferences, Dr. Marwa, who is a moderator today. My colleague speaker, Dr. Joshi, who enlightened each of us on very practical grounds about nutrition. all the participants who are very enthusiastically looking forward for this seminars and the team torrent first of all i compliment and congratulate to all of you who have some newer inclinations in life and as the course director dr sudhir sai has already said that we as humans invest very little time and energy towards how to live life so these are the minutes these are the hours in which we are working on how to go ahead in life learning from each other my idea in next 20 25 minutes is to discuss about exercise and doctors i personally do not have any conflict of interest as far as this talk is concerned except for the fact that i want to have a happiness through the sharing the enjoyment which i have gathered through doing exercise for years together maybe whatever age i became conscious 4 5 6 years i started doing different kind of exercise and sports and i am 50 today doing still it today 2 to 3 hours a day and that is making me extremely happy so yes we all know that exercise and as we'll discuss does reduce mortality cardiovascular cancer neurological but to me most important point is it improves the quality of life somebody asked me anis what is most important factor you give importance to in your life is it fitness i said number one is happiness and number two is fitness <clears throat> in fact if you look closely and if you look very comprehensively 
fitness and happiness both are the two sides of a coin if you talk only about physical aspects then yes you believe that fitness is different than happiness but if you take the definition of fitness to mind and spirit also then you start understanding fitness is happiness and happiness is fitness fitness gives years to the life and happiness gives life to the years so both of them are very important and i'm very sure somebody who starts chasing one will meet the other somewhere in the path now why doctors having more problems as was discussed by dr sudhir shah we all of know that doctors have got higher risk of cardiovascular disease and death because of that the average age of a doctor is less as compared to many professionals because we are faced with multiple challenges multiple problems and lot of insecurities two most important things which have been product of last 20 years is increasing competition amongst doctors it is in fact sense of competition basically it is complementation and the awareness on the part of client which is increasing that is also putting a heavy toll now as doctors we are stressed because <clears throat> we need to keep pace with the advances in medical field no doubt we all have to learn a lot we need to meet extra demands created by critical ill patients you have patients who are sick who are in icus either you are directly involved in treatment or you are a referring general physicians but who is answerable to the relatives and patient there is continuous concerns of medical legal issues perhaps the generation of yesterday has lived in shangrila but all the doctors who are today between 25 to 50 years believe me they all are going to face medical legal issues on quite regular basis and that's why we have to enter into exhaustive discussions with patients and we have to maintain a lot of records there are a lot of financial and managerial requirements as far as clinics are concerned we might have our individual clinic we might be a part of hospital but then there are issues about management and there are issues about finance these two terms are very important from managerial point of view ctp and dtp ctp is increasing ctp is capacity to pay that is increasing on the part of patient but dtp is going down dtp is desire to pay so when patient has a less and less desire to pay money for doctors and for health and the cost of treatment is going up how to manage and that is producing lot of stress on the doctors i have witnessed a self destructive feeling in many doctors and that is feeling of insecurity many doctors have a continuous question that where to get patients from and somebody who gets 30 patients to his opd today has a concern that will he get the same number of patients tomorrow so this insecurity surrounds many doctors and one point which is very important we doctors are surrounded by negative vibrations thrown by patients patients do not throw negative vibrations by their choice but i will give you what i have so if i am having pain of body and mind it's impossible for me to pass on positive and good vibrations to you so we are in the midst of negative vibrations and in the midst of all we are continuously confronted with a very serious question where is the time for self and there is the time for family where is the time to answer to my sublime needs and that's how the doctors are at problems when the previous president of us barack obama wrote a letter to mr dean ornish about his ideas on obama care when he was formulating obama care what dean ornish answered to obama through a letter was what we eat how much we exercise whether or not we smoke how we respond to stress and the quality of our relationship and social support may be as powerful as drugs and surgery in treating and preventing heart disease and that according to me stands true for all the diseases what he wrote additionally was we don't have to wait for a new breakthrough in drugs or surgery we just need to put into practice what we already know so nutrition we know a lot of things exercise we know a lot of things mind resting relaxing and uplifting we know a lot of things we need to put them into practice now if you look to the definition of health given by who we all know that it is not just mere absence of disease but it is a positive state of physical mental and social well being if you look to the rishi munis who searched a lot in those days and those era who were scientists of that age they said as far as vedic view is concerned health is purity of body mind and spirit look at a comprehensive definition perhaps there is nothing to be added or deleted in this definition of health is concerned and they also knew that you need to feed all of them with pure food when we discuss about nutrition most of the time we discuss about something which affects our body most importantly but equally important or more important is how do we feed our mind and spirit that also is very important and so what do we achieve if we all become healthy that is if you all have got purity of body mind and spirit what we achieve is purity in thought speech and action and that is what ex exactly is needed 
Now, when we talk about exercise, many people come out with a wonderful idea. And there is a school of thought which believes we all are born with a certain number of heartbeats. And then why should I be wasting on exercise? Because when you exercise, your heart rate goes up. If God has made certain limits to your heart rates, then increasing heart rate is not good. But this is just a lighter part. But you all know that when you exercise on a regular basis, your basal metabolic rate improves and your basal resting pulse rate because of the increased vagal tone goes to down, which is physiologically very good. So what one should expect out of this talk? Number one, why should we be conscious about exercise? Number two, what is physical activity and what is exercise? Number three, to understand the importance of exercise in health and maintaining health. I'm not going to touch the topic of rehabilitation or exercise in various diseases. How to integrate in our daily life. And as was discussed by previous speaker, Dr. Joshi, about dose of food, similarly, it is very important dose of exercise. What should be the intensity? What should be the variety of exercise, like variety of food? Is there any risk associated to exercise? Yes, nothing comes without risk, or there is some risk and we need to be careful. What are the precautions to be observed? And add on, and has been well discussed, is you need to add on healthy diet, you need to add on certain de-stress mechanisms, meditations or stress relief, so that life becomes good. There may be people who are exercising a lot for three hours a day, but if their minds are impure, if their minds are restless, if they are not taking care of their other aspects of life or existence, then those exercise has no meaning. Now science could witness, and this is quite back in 2002, what was described was per year across the globe, two million deaths are produced purely because of the physical inactivity. Now we all know that lack of exercise and physical inactivity does contribute to so many other diseases and death, but purely by lack of physical activity, many people are dying. We also know there was a wonderful data called as Interheart, which said that nine modifiable risk factors account for 90% of the first heart attack. And what they said is at least in 12% of first heart attack, lack of exercise is a very responsible element. So this is extremely important. So what is difference between physical activity and exercise? So basically physical activity is any bodily movement produced by skeletal muscle that leads to energy expenditure. So when I'm talking, I'm raising my hand, I'm moving my face, all of these are physical activities. When you walk down, when you walk from your car to your clinic, it's a physical activity. Well, what is exercise? Exercise is a physical activity, but it is planned and structured. So when you decide to walk two kilometers at a specific feet, speed, it becomes exercise. When you plan to go up the stairs and come down for 10 times, it becomes exercise. So both of them are important. And we in our daily life should include both of them, more the physical activity, more the exercise, we feel better. Somebody asked a definition, what is the definition of fitness? And then I thought a lot, there are many definitions, but very important point is, if you look to just bare science, if your body systems, all the systems, GI, nervous, cardiovascular, musculoskeletal, et cetera, et cetera, are functioning efficiently and effectively, you are fit. But then you have hundreds and thousands of lakhs of people whose all systems are normal, but still they are not fit. So fitness, according to me, is beyond body system working efficiently and effectively. When I call a person physically fit, when he or she has ability to carry out daily tasks with vigor, alertness, joy, jubilation, without undue fatigue. So if I'm a doctor doing my medical practice for eight hours or 10 hours a day, I should be doing it with all the vibrations, vigor, and alertness. And then I have ample energy time left out with me in which I can enjoy my leisure time pursuits. May it be reading, may it be music, may it be dancing, may it be exercise. And then at the end of the day, when I'm sleeping, and if there is some emergency which is unforeseen, I should have all the physical and mental capacity to answer to that very positively. So if I'm having this state of body and mind, I should be considered fit. And, and this fitness depends on a lot many factors food, exercise, activity, sleep, work, social system in which we are, belief systems which we hold, the attitude, spirituality, genetics, et cetera, et cetera. So they all come together to decide. Basically, fitness comes from how do we deal with our body, mind, and spirit. If we deal with them positively, consciously, and carefully, we become fit. We all know this history of evolution of human beings. We took close to 25 lakh years to become from four leg to two leg man. And then in the last 50 years, again, from two leg animal, we are now an animal who is sitting, not using any leg. 
So this is where epidemiologists have produced a threat that if human race continue to do the same, perhaps we may lose our legs because the organs which are not used are going to be wasted. So this is a threat and perhaps we couldn't adjust to modernization in food habits we have, the activity level and the stress. And that's where we are entering into problem. When this beautiful actress of my era returned to second innings through a movie, Nach Balye, she looked majestically graceful. She danced wonderfully well. And when she was asked a question, what is the secret of her fitness? What she replied is very important. We all are doctors and we all know this. This is extremely important. In, eat plenty of salads, which has been well discussed. Keep regular hours, no fat diets. Listen to your body signals. Don't overindulge and make exercise a habit. We all know this, but it is quite unfortunate. And I'm very sure Dr. Sudhir Shah would agree to me. We as doctors have disproportionately higher trust and dependence in medicines. This is something which has gone extremely, extremely chaotic as far as doctors are concerned. For everything we want a medicine, not only common lemon, but even we doctors are dependent on medicines for so many things. I don't say medicines are bad. We all are practitioners of medicines, but our over dependence on medicine has to go. And we all should know that for fitness and for living a good life, not medicines, it is the healthy lifestyle, which is very important. Perhaps all of us know that what should we eat and what we should not eat, whether we should exercise or we should not exercise, whether we should meditate or not. But the biggest question on our side is implementation. And that is well mentioned by Ved Vyasa through Mahabharat Slok, where he asked a question to Duryodhan that, Duryodhan, don't you understand you should be giving at least five villages to your brothers? And at that time, what Duryodhan says or utters is, Janami dharmam nachame pravritti, Janami adharmam nachame nivritti. So as far as doing exercise, as far as selecting food is concerned, as far as doing distress activity or meditation or mind positive activities is concerned, all of us know that what needs to be done. But biggest issue is when should I start it? And the best day to start is today itself. After knowing certain basics, let's look at what are the research evidences about physical activity and exercise. Now, this is a beautiful article published in uh, British Journal of Internal Medicine, 1953 where most of us were not born. And the fact which was decided based on 31,000 London transport worker that whether physical activity at workplace reduces cardiovascular disease. And they compared 15,000 conductors versus 16,000 drivers. And what was found, if you look to the cardiovascular event and death, drivers have got three times more risk of cardiovascular events purely because of the fact that conductors keeps on moving in the bus while drivers remain seated. So just increasing physical activity at the place where you work reduces your risk of cardiovascular disease. And from 1953, the science in 2016 has advanced much. And a beautiful article in Jack, which was published, exercise at the extremes, the amount of exercise to reduce cardiovascular events. And what that article proved is sitting is as worse as smoking as far as inviting cardiovascular disease and blood pressure is concerned. What was said is prolonged sitting increases the risk of all-cause mortality in a dose-dependent fashion. So more you sit, more the risk of death you get. Breaking up sitting time improves cardiovascular health, glucose homeostasis, and reduces mortality. So we all doctors have habit of sitting long times in our OPDs. So my friends, the practical conclusion is when you see two or three patients, get up, move a little bit, and again, come to your seat or you have a coach for the patients, at least make few patients to sleep on the couch, wake up or sit, stand up from your sitting position, go and examine the patient and come back to your chair. That is not only important to examine a patient better, but it also is important to break up your sitting time. Least active, but still effective behavior of exercise is standing. So when you stand instead of seat, you burn 1.3 to 1.44 times more calories. So if you are sitting for one hour, if you are burning 60 calories, if you are standing, you burn 75 to 80 calories. And standing at least two hours a day does reduce all-cause mortality. So it's very, very important that all of us do give sufficient importance to exercise. Now, we all know that at molecular level or physiological level, how the exercise works, it works a lot of things. It improves insulin sensitivity. It reestablishes the endothelial function. We all know that there are certain bad hormones and there are certain good hormones. They lead to a conclusion what is called as cardiovascular and metabolic health. If you talk today, the whole science is working on metabolic and vascular health. 
So it is this endothelial function, which is a crucial function for maintaining vascular and metabolic health. When you exercise, your myocardial perfusion improves, your blood viscosity goes down, platelet function improves, oxygen requirement goes down, and there are a lot of good things happening with exercise, which we'll discuss. A very important chart, which was published in textbook of cardiovascular medicine by Eugene Brownlow again in 2004, that when you do regular physical activity, it has got tremendous benefits based on research on so many diseases. It reduces blood pressure, reduces diabetes, improves lipid profile, reduces cardiac disease, reduces stroke, reduces cancer, reduces breast cancer, reduces osteoarthritis, osteoporosis, gallbladder disease, and improves mental health. So proven benefits of exercise across all systems. Now let us see a very important point. We all are cardiologists, diabetologists, and most of us are quite cholesterol centric. So let's take people who have got normal cholesterol levels. Either they had normal cholesterol levels without medicine or their cholesterol levels were brought down to normal with the help of medicine, no worry. But LDL cholesterol less than 70, total cholesterol less than 150, the most important target in today's world as far as cardiovascular death is concerned. Now take these people whose LDL cholesterol is less than 70 and they were divided into people who are fit and people who are unfit. Out of these people whose cholesterol was damn normal, if they were unfit, the risk of cardiovascular death was five to six times higher than people who were fit. Look at the importance of fitness, which is beyond cholesterol. Your LDL is 50, that's the news which most of my cardiac friends would love that. But if you are unfit, you are perhaps not doing good as far as cardiovascular death is concerned. So it's important not only to just take care of cholesterol, but to improve your fitness. We all know that CRP has emerged as a new inflammatory marker suggesting Im improper vascular health. So it has been seen that if your CRP level is high, your risk of heart attack, stroke, and death is high. And that is beyond doubt. Now look at the people. Those who have low level of fitness, their CRP level is high as compared to those whose fitness is high. So if your fitness is high, if you are exercising on a regular basis, the exercise work as anti-inflammatory. It reduces inflammation of vascular system and it is evidenced by reduced level of CRP. Now, what about exercise and HDL? That's where it's important for doctors to understand. Most of us believe that exercise increases HDL in a rocket fashion. No. It's only when you do frequent intense exercise, that means five to six days a week, at least 60 to 70 minutes vigorous exercise, then only HDL goes up. In obese people with high triglyceride, when you exercise, HDL goes up. But otherwise, increase in HDL by exercise is very nominal. But what is most important is it changes the particle size of HDL to larger one, which is more important. Now, if you do regular exercise, it may not reduce your bad cholesterol too much. It may not reduce, but then what it does is it reduces or it increases the size of LDL particle. And we all know that smaller the size of LDL particle, more the cardiovascular disease, larger the size of LDL particle, less the disease. So regular exercise may not affect your LDL cholesterol level to the extent you believe, but it will change the size of particle favorably. Now, let me give you an example. If you do regular exercise, if you couple it with diet care, meditation, and if required, some medicines or, and smoking cessation, how does it help? Here is a live example of my young friend. This was a neurosurgeon, my friend at the age of almost 32, weighing 82 kg, busy, busy professionals, doing a lot of surgeries, seeing a lot of patients, outreach OPDs to at least 10 places a month. He came to me with 82 kg weight, 146 by 94 blood pressure, LDL high, HDL low, the ratio is very bad, Glycated hemoglobin has started creeping up because of the metabolic syndrome. Little high elevated FBS, PPBS, and HSCRP was high. This is the values with which he entered. And he was suggested three medicines by my fellow colleague. One for blood pressure, one for cholesterol, one for diabetes metformin. So I said to him, that's right. My friend is not wrong. What he suggested is important. But if you make a commitment to yourself about certain things, I can get you off medicines. And he believed me. I just prescribed him or I sent him to a good nutritionist. I told him how to exercise and just made him to sit with a physiotherapist. And he used to have a habit of smoking once in a while, one cigarette a day roughly. I said to him, you have to quit that. And he came to me after three months and what were the parameters? Very little change in all the parameters. If you believe me, every parameter has changed by only five to 10%. It is negligible change. So weight from 82 kg went down to 77 kg. 
blood pressure some reduction cholesterol some reduction glycated hemoglobin some reduction sugar some reduction hsrp some reduction he stops smoking but now if you feed all this information to a calculator most of you will be aware that there are certain risk calculators available they are searched for us populations not for indians but still you feed this data the data of 3 months before if when put to this calculator the risk of cardiovascular disease and death is 25% if this new data is fed to that calculator it comes to 5% so look at the magic of diet exercise and cessation of smoking that in 3 months my friend who had a risk of 25% death and disease of cv disease came from 25% to 5% this is without any cost zero cost zero medicine just 3 months and your risk of heart attack stroke and death is reduced to fifth percentage and this is important of maintaining a good lifestyle now regular physical activity and fitness achieved by exercise does lot of things it improves muscle performance gives you good balance posture gives you stability gives you neuromuscular control and coordination mobility flexibility in addition to heart and lungs benefit but the biggest point is it's not the cute dog it's me who has to exercise and live this tv cola culture now traditionally we know that there are two kinds of exercise aerobic and anaerobic now those terms are gone every exercise has to be aerobic so there are two terms cardio exercise or endurance training that is the exercise in which your pulmonary and cardiac systems are stretched so that's where you become breathless your respiratory rate increases that's where you got tachycardia so here is cardio respiratory exercise that is called as endurance training it's important to have a thorough health check up before you start exercise program but these all are exercises which can increase your heart rate and give you a good good amount of various benefits walking hiking jogging bicycling swimming rowing treadmill stair climbing etc etc but it's very important that those who are middle age should do it in a safe and monitored ambience and there are various activities which have got certain scales that what you do for one hour what is the calorie you burn many of us are habituated to just moderate speed walking that is 4 and 1/2 to 5 kilometers per hour of walking when you walk it for one hour roughly you burn 220 to 260 calories based on your weight etc so these are some good activities and you know certain charts available the another form of exercise which was previously told as anaerobic exercise is now said as resistant training or strength training and that is basically stretching your musculoskeletal system it improves your muscle power and muscle strength we all know that and dr joshi would agree to me for indians who are thin and lean a term has been coined and this term was first let me know through dr sashank joshi himself that we all are thin lean and fat indians so though indian are overall having less weight as compared to western counterpart but still our chance of getting diabetes cardiovascular disease and death because of that is much higher so one of the fact is our body percentage of fat is much higher as compared to lean body mass so when you do regular resistant training exercises your body fat reduces your bmr bone mineral density lean body mass etc improves insulin sensitivity improves and you get tremendous benefit but yes very important point is you need to learn it with the help of a trainer you cannot start muscle training without any trainer you should have health check up done should be done in supervision should be learned for 3 to 6 month and then only you should start working on that a very important point is our muscles are the waste basket of our body as was discussed in previous lecture we eat so many nonsense things as well as so many waste products are produced when we metabolize all these nonsense things so more the size of waste basket you have your body's ability to tolerate toxins and poisons will go up so a person with larger muscle mass apparently will tolerate more toxins as compared to a person who is obese so it's very very important to have good amount of muscle mass and look at the benefit of both exercise your endurance training that is cardio exercise and your muscle training both of them if you look to the cardiovascular system the benefit more is achieved by endurance for example so when you do endurance exercise walking jogging cycling swimming your cardiovascular system gets a lot of benefit but if you look to increasing stamina improving your basal metabolic rate improving quality of life both training counts equal and if you look to your bone and muscle health your bone mineral density your percentage of body fat lean body mass they all are help 
more by resistant training. So it's very, very important. Each of us, each of us lose 1% of our muscle mass after the age of 40, 45, unless we do resistant training exercise. So we need to do this. Many people have a lot of myth in their mind that we, after the age of 45, do not need resistance training. According to me, as the age increases, your need of resistance training goes up. There are so many females who believe we don't need to do resistance training. Again, it's a myth. Females have less muscle mass, poorer bones, so they need more resistance training than men. So both of the exercises are important. Our ancient Indian system did think about this a lot, and that's why they came out with Astang Yoga system. Now, most of us, when we discuss yoga, yoga, we all are unfortunately inspired by only Western people. For them, yoga means only one thing, and that is one part of Ashtanga Yoga, that is asanas, that is various body postures. At the max, people add pranayam. But Ashtanga Yoga, the system which was invented by great Rishimanis of this continent, they included eight factors, and most of them are very important. If you do regular exercise and pranayam, but if you are not purified your mind by your mind, if you are not following certain disciplines and rules of life, you are not going to have fitness. And that's why it's important that we practice in totality. What is an exercise regime? Coming to sort of conclusive remarks for the next last three, four, five minutes. What is an exercise regime for most of the doctors? We should be exercising 50 to 70 minutes per day. It's not 30 to 40 minutes. That dose is for Western people whose risk of heart attack, stroke, and blood pressure and diabetes is one half than us. So since the risk of disease is more with us, since the bone and muscles we have are poorer genetically, our dose of exercise is larger than the Western people. We have to do it almost six days a week. And we need to have different kinds of exercise. Cardio exercise, it is the backbone of our exercise, 30 to 40 minutes a day. Resistant training, at least two to three times a week. You have to do something to control your tummy because abdominal muscles go weaker and our tummy comes out. We have to do a lot of stretching on a daily basis and pranayam breath control is very important. We need to check what is moderate intensity. It is different for different people, but you can do something called a talk test. When you do exercise, you try to talk with the colleague. If you can talk nicely, perhaps you are underdoing. While if you talk and you feel extreme difficult to talk, you feel too much breathless, perhaps you are overdoing. So those who want to do moderate activity should be able to talk relatively okay with the colleague when they do exercise. Now, there are certain questions my friends always keep on asking, Anish, you are quite crazy for exercise, but I don't have time for one hour. I have time for 10 minutes. Then I ask them another question. Can you spare 10 minutes four times a day? They say yes. So do exercise in short bouts, 10 minutes, four times a day. It gives you equal benefit of 40 minutes at a stretch exercise. So that's a very wonderful relieving news. A warm up and cool down period is must when you plan exercise for 40, 60 minutes. You have to be well hydrated throughout. You shouldn't do exercise with total empty stomach, neither with full stomach. You should take something so that you are not totally empty stomach. Be careful about warning signs. When you exercise, if you feel dizziness, giddiness, if you feel too low, if you feel too much perspiring, if you feel disproportionately breathless, these are the warning signs. And that's where you have to stop and you have to get yourself assessed. And don't do exercise when you've got some viral illness, body ache, muscle pain, etc. Another important question, many people do ask me, do I need to do vigorous exercise? The answer is if you want to achieve cardiovascular metabolic benefit, moderate exercise is all that is enough. There is no need to become... Uh, tiger shop or Hrithik Roshan. You can be just a routine, a good exerciser, and you will be happy. I don't have one hour at a stretch. Yes, you can do exercise 10 minutes, five times a day. What should make me feel concerned? Warning signs, as I discuss. Is there a risk of exercise? Yes, there is some small risk of exercise, which I'll take care. There is risk to musculoskeletal system, and there is risk to cardiovascular system. Now, this is a wonderful article that benefit of exercise. When you do moderate exercise, you achieve most of the benefits. See, this is the risk of cardiovascular death to a person who is least fit. When you start doing 30 to 40 minutes exercise on a daily basis, your risk of death reduces tremendously. Then when you further increase intensity of exercise, your risk goes further down, but there is a low of diminishing return with increment. So when you start doing more and more, more and more exercise, Additional benefit is small. So for most of the people, the best thing is they become moderately active and they achieve almost everything. 
risk of exercise is very small. Sometimes somebody gets heart rhythm disorder or heart attack, uncommon, but it can happen. And that's why, as I talk to you, proper evolution is must. But overall risk is extremely small. When you exercise regularly, chance of having heart attack or rhythm disturbance is one in four lakh. So if you exercise one hour a day, and if you do it 50 years in your life, you are exercising 15,000 hours. So if you exercise for 40 lives, there is one chance that you will get rhythm disturbance or heart attack. So it's pretty small. A relevant question for today's seminar. I am a middle-aged doctor. Can I start exercise now? Very well. It's very, very important. Still, it will improve your quality of life and reduce risk of heart attack and stroke. But the biggest question is, every morning my brain tells me to exercise and my body says, let me sleep with kambal or let me have a first cup of tea or coffee and then I'll think on that. No, your decision to exercise starts from today. Exercise gives you so many benefits in addition to your heart, lung, bone and muscle. That is, it makes you more energetic and you feel more strong. It removes your stress. It helps you to sleep better. It makes you look good. And believe me, your self-confidence will go up. Those who have not exercised, start doing exercise one hour a day. And in August 2021, we all will hopefully meet again, at least on Zoom, and we'll check your level of confidence. I'm pretty sure each of you will get a lot of benefit. It has been well discussed by Dr. Joshi about diet, and I just concur all of them with her. A very important point is we should have a variety of food. We should have something which is locally available, which is seasonally available, and which is traditional as more important diet. She also mentioned a lot about it is important to have sattvic diet. Perhaps allopathic science will not be able to touch these points, but our Ayurvedic science and our ancient Indian science does know that. Anna Evahar, a very important point and which has been well mentioned as a part of intermittent fasting, etc., is interval eating is most of your calorie, as has been mentioned by Jainism, should be between sunrise and sunset. That's where your stomach and body works well. And a very important point about all is it's the culture which we have in only this culture, our Rishimani said, Annavahi Brahmaha. So food is God. When we eat, we eat as if we are praying. So when we eat as a prayer, I'm very sure that food is going to help us. Doctors should be miles away from smoking and alcohol. It's very unfortunate to see so many friend colleagues who do have a habit of tobacco and alcohol. That's something which is useless and they are the biggest enemy of fitness. So we have to get rid of this. Even if I exercise for two hours, if I smoke and take alcohol, it doesn't serve the purpose. And a very important point, which I'm very sure the course director, Dr. Sudhir Shah, is going to touch someday by himself because he's master in this. It's not the training of body which is sufficient. You need to train your mind to a level where it becomes very strong, sharp, stable, positive, pure, and equanimous. Because we all know that as far as fitness is concerned, to me, body matters 10%. Mind matters 90%. There are people who are weak by physique, but strong by mind. But if your mind is weak, you cannot achieve the things. Even if your body may be like Arnold Schwarzenegger or somebody else, but if your mind is impure, weak, and unfocused, you cannot achieve things in life. So it's very, very important. I'm sure someday it's going to be touched. Sleep is a very important component for fitness. So is a happy and healthy sex life. Without that, fitness cannot be achieved. And so coming to conclusion, my friends, let's make a choice today. Let me go get more active. It's a choice. Everything in life is a choice. Whether I'll be in good mood today or bad mood is a choice. Whether today evening I'll go out for a walking or not is a choice. Whether today evening I'm to have, going to have a chole bhature or a fruits and vegetables rich protein diet as suggested by Josie is a choice. To me, everything in life is a choice and we should be able to make proper choices. So make a timetable for exercise. Do exercise when you are not full or empty stomach. Don't do when you are having illness. Get a good pair of shoes. Investing money here is very important. Get good comfortable clothes. You can have company of your friends who can be motivating. You can have company of music. Adequate water and natural fruits or juice you can take. Warm up and cool down is very important. Do the talk test to judge the intensity of exercise. Involve all kinds of exercise. Cardio, resistant training, stretch, abs and pranayam and love exercise, feel happy when you do exercise. So as I talk to you, everything is a choice. So let us make a choice that I am going to do a regular exercise from today itself. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Sudhir Shah. Thank you all participants. Thank you, Dr. Marwa. And thank you, Torrent, for this time. Thank you very much.
thank you anish for very lucid and flawless talk as usual uh, you have shown the mantra of fitness and it clearly looks like that you are not mentally physically but also vocally very very fit and you uh, brought us through uh, the entire spectrum of fitness which you uh, yourself practice uh, so a great compliments to you uh, for such a lucid and wholesome presentation and now we move on to the panel discussion where we are going to take uh, some certain aspects uh, uh, i invite dr sudhir sa uh, dr silpa joshi anish is already there and let's have some discussion on the topics uh, which were discussed by dr silpa joshi and dr anish chandarana uh, let me put a question to uh, dr silpa joshi uh, silpa am i audible to you yes yes, yes. Uh, silpa uh, you have very nicely highlighted about the car problem of uh, our country you have cited the star study and many other studies and where indians take carbohydrates in tune of 65 to 70% my question is that you recommended that our carb content should be not more than 50 or 55% but most of indians are lacto vegetarian so how to be vegetarian and also having that co uh, composition of food where we can have no excess of carbohydrate more than 50 or 55% kindly uh, have your comments on this so very important for component of indian diet which people do not uh, uh, use is pulses and dals even if you talk to patient and i'm sure you all do that and talking about eating dal the first thing patient says is gas hota hai before even you can say anything the first thing so i think it's very important it's a under utilized weapon it is a source of carbohydrate but it's a very good source of protein for people who are lacto who also consume milk they can add milk paneer and dahi in their diet but i personally believe that a pulse is a sword which is unutilized in indian nutrition you know globally people are appreciating uses of beans and uh, you know mook beans moong which was not known in other countries 50 years back today is sold in every supermarket across the world under name of mook beans but if you tell a indian patient to eat it the first thing they will say is gas hota hai so i think that thing has to be removed from their mind pulses have to be treated well so that you do not get gastrointestinal discomfort which is associated with eating pulses so sprouting soaking and throwing away phytates from the water it's very important and it can be utilized beautifully in fact uh, i should say that one of my student did a research study which we published in american diabetes association where she made khakras from rajma instead of wheat and she was able to get fasting and postprandial sugars of pre diabetic patients down to normal level even they had weight loss and loss of waist circumference so pulses are a very very important weapon and we should use them very very well Uh, uh there is another question and uh, nowadays there is a big fad or fashion that people are speaking about wheat that don't consume wheat and instead of wheat you eat other grains and that is going to helpful for diabetics to control their sugar values etc and some people have started abandoning wheat and you know we india is a wheat country and we cannot uh, live or sustain without wheat uh, what's your comment on this so uh, see there is a percentage of people who are gluten sensitive and we are not belittling the fact that there will be people who are gluten sensitive and they should not consume but 99% people are not gluten sensitive they are not eating gluten because it's a fashion not to eat it so 99% i would say even 99.5% of people are not gluten sensitive now the thing is eating millets is good it is sustainable see the you have to understand millets require much less water in agriculture and therefore millets are better crops as compared to wheat and rice which utilize a lot of water so if you are talking about sustainable agriculture yes millets are the way to go but one has to understand that millets like ragi or nachni which is very much in fashion today has a higher glycemic index than rice and wheat both and you will find that when people eat ragi porridge or in karnataka it is eaten as ragi mudda that is ragi balls or in maharashtra it is eaten as bakri so ragi roti their sugars postprandials are way higher 
than after eating chapati. Also, because millets do not have gluten, you cannot use belan to make the roti because there is no stretchability in the grain. Gluten is the stretchable protein. Therefore, you need lot of dough to make the same roti. So, glycemic load of the meal goes up. So, while millets are good, please do not get me wrong. I am not saying millets are not good. Millets are good. They have to be used in isocaloric fashion. As compared to wheat, so 30 gram of wheat can be replaced by 30 gram of jowar, bajra, ragi, whatever you are trying to use. But one thing has to be there: people who claim to be gluten sensitive are not. They are eating because somebody told them that if I eat wheat, it will be good for me. So, for others, it will also be good for me. And the problem with dietetics is dietetics goes through fashion trends. Just 20 years back, when I was a student in Nair Hospital, I I have written diets which are without fat. Today I am writing Mediterranean diets which are 40 percent fat. So dietetics goes through fashion trends, and I think what is required is sensibility. One can one can read literature, but one cannot forget you know what your sensibility says. And if your SMBG, if your if your SMBG is showing a postprandial high after eating jawar, I think we have no business eating it. Even though world may say it, so I think this wheat is a very uh, misunderstood concept, and gluten is really not the culprit. So in nutshell, wheat is not permissible except if there is a gluten insensitivity, which is very rare in Indian patients. Yeah. So that's a myth that one should avoid wheat totally to have better glycemic control. <coughs> uh, now. There are lots of questions now. Uh, can I move on to Dr. Anish Chandrana? You gave an example of that 1953 study done in London of drivers versus conductors, and there were three times higher morbidity and mortality in drivers versus conductors, the poor drivers. <laughs> uh, probably you gave the reason that they are not exercising. It is not the stress which is causing more death and mortality in drivers uh, uh, than just a lack of exercise or not moving. Uh, or that is more responsible. I'm pretty sure if this study is published in 2020, there will be lots of criticism and comments. So, Anis, uh, what is the importance of, uh, I am sure Sudhir has organized one full session on stress, but nothing is complete uh, about the lifestyle management if we don't speak about stress. So there is a lot of importance of stress uh, which can you know, offset ex any benefit which we can accrue through exercise or dietary habits or relaxation or meditation, etc. So what is your take on this, Anis? Yeah, good point. I mean, even by this is what I had a wonderful discussion once on this trial itself that at that time, perhaps stress as a cause of problems to human life was not existing. Maybe in 1953, the way stress was perceived was totally different than the way it's perceived today. So they had not in their question or taken this point into account that uh, how does one feel the stress? But I do agree that in today's world, at least if you look to Ahmedabad, Mumbai, et cetera, cities, driver would have more stress than conductor. But we even don't know about those eras. See, in 1953, was driving a bus or corporation bus was really stressful or not? I don't know. It might not be stressful. It might be a pleasure. Like, see, stress, we all know that it's quite individual. When there is a matter of going, I say, traveling to Udaipur is concerned, we do travel frequently. For me, driving self and reaching Udaipur is not a happy event. But then my son always will jump out that though I'm a medical student, let me have a break for two days. I'll drive Papa for you. You sit easily. Driving is a pleasure to him. So I don't know about 1953 whether driving was bringing stress in or not. But I do agree, it, it might be featured. So now, if in today's world, such a data will be generated, it will feature a lot many other factors also. But I, I'm, I'm quite sure even conductors of today's world will be quite stressed because they also deal with money. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sure. Uh, so if no. they do not match the required amount of money at the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, in the same continuity, uh, you talk about exercise and its importance in fitness, mental fitness, physical fitness, cardiovascular fitness, etc. Uh, but for many people, I think uh, most of the people in the society, they feel that, that doing exercise is to bring down their weight. So exercise and dietary changes or modification are always weight-centric in the minds of the patient and the society. 
and particularly young women uh, without being biased to uh, female sex uh, women they are very very weight conscious that magic number on the weighing scale it depresses them and they said oh we do exercise for 2 to 2 and a half hours and still we are not able to do 500 grams uh this is a very very common scenario which we face as an endocrinologist perhaps you might not be facing uh so anish what would be your advice i i i could take it very uh, clearly from your talk that exercising is important and you you just spoke about the example of the urologist who could lose 5 6 kg but your talk was not weight centric uh the benefits of exercise are not weight centric it is much more than that and how we can convince our physician colleagues who are in going to in turn going to convince their number of patients who are weight you know yearning for weight loss and and, and not able to and, and in turn getting depressed yeah so I, i do agree all the benefits of exercise most of them are without considering the weight even if you maintain the same weight exercise is going to give you tremendous benefit not only physically but psychologically also you are going to make a lot of age loss see when you do regular exercise and combine cardio and resistance training even though sometimes there may not be significant difference in weight but you do achieve age loss third which is very important and as you know you are more expert than me even 5 to 7% reduction in weight and if maintain for take two three and then stop extremely helpful yes uh, so i am very sure but another important point is out of 100 people if those who are sincere do regular exercise as per the guidance of trainer for 40 to 60 minutes a day do take diet and nutrition as per the advice of an expert nutritionist i am pretty sure anybody who is obese is going to lose weight there is no question except for few who have got certain serious diseases inside otherwise weight is a caloric imbalance and that's where when you address your caloric intake and caloric burning roughly we all know that 500 calorie per day if we lose either we take 250 less and 250 burn more then we are going to lose 2 kg weight per month and that statistics works in more than 90% most of the time i've seen is people do not have an approach which is sustainable there are many people who start with crash diet there are many people who are weekend warriors they exercise for 2 3 hours at a time and then they get fatigue so the most important point is consistency consistency and consistency so if i'm consistent in diet consistent in exercise though dose is adequate and simple i'm very sure at the end of 3 months i'm going to make some change in my weight that that is that is without without loss another important point i have seen with so many exercisers including most of the youngsters they over reward themselves for the kind of exercise they do okay most of the people i go to rajpath club and karnavati club in amdavad they will gently walk for 30 minutes which is one and half to 2 kilometers they will walk they will do some stretching and they are eating fafda and jalebi with a full plate that i have done a good exercise so that's a problem so that's why it's very very important that everybody needs dr joshi or alike to take care of their disease and daily intake first is that your 80% weight comes from your food so you need to control that weight first and then you have to put exercise additionally to lose weight okay uh, i since we are running short of time last two question one is to dr silpa joshi and anish chandrana and be answer one, as, one as second suggest, sir yes sir even uh, we can take two question but short question short answers please yes 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 So a uh, question to Silpa ma'am what is your advice to physicians you must be looking after lots of physicians and their family and what are their dietary errors and what is your message to them specifically because this is physician oriented i mean doctors oriented uh, webinar which dr sudhir bhai organized so what my understanding is and probably i mean you can correct me is physicians keep very long hours and so they will eat a breakfast and then they will they do not know when they eat a lunch and i have couple of cardiologists who are my patients and because they are in the cath lab they they are never sure when they are going to come out of that place and therefore when they come out then they will eat whatever comes in front of them and that's where i feel that couple of things are very important i am not a big proponent of small frequent feeds because i don't think that actually works intermittent fasting has shown such beautiful results that uh, i do not think i was never a proponent of small frequent feeds but i think eating something more sensible is something which one does what one does not should not forget and i think therefore having something coming from your home or a lunch box 
in your opd or whether it's your surgery just outside eating something more sensible is important another thing that i want to say and not only to physicians to everybody that please think of fruit and vegetables as food in india when you say food it has to come out of a kadai deep fried otherwise it's not food otherwise it is just time pass so when when i write fruit on my diet sheet they say madam fruit theek hai khana do na to fruit khana hi hai na fruit is also food so i think that is something that we preach i mean as medical professionals we always say an apple a day keeps doctor away but i really wonder how many physicians themselves eat an apple a day because they don't have to keep anybody away right they themselves are physicians okay so uh, fruit is yeah. very important and nuts are very important source of energy and because they are concentrated source of energy they feel you make you feel very good so that is something that we should include in your diet uh anish uh question to you uh, how to change the old habits because you know uh, there are many physicians who are in mid 40s or early 50s and they have not exercised so far in their life and and uh, how to change the habits and enter and introduce exercise in their regime now at this age wonderful uh, point i think this i have been answering to most of the doctors on a daily basis in my clinic i get one or two doctors daily afternoon who come and sit and they discuss so to me most important point for doctors is to create a timetable 99% of doctors believe that they are 24 by 7 on duty that's the myth that's the wrong concept a doctor has to have first timetable and then a doctor has to stick to that timetable on 90% of the days maybe two or three days or four days in a month you can be heavier but first is timetable that's first that's where only where you can have a nutrition that's where you can have exercise now to create a timetable number one is a wish and commitment is required and second we need to create a system or we need to fall into a system where someone else can take care of my patients and my responsibilities and i can take care of his patients or his responsibilities unless a doctor put him to a system where system takes care of the patients rather than he or she alone doctor will not be able to make timetable so i personally understood this need that timetable is must and to create a timetable you need to have a system so when doctor will do these two things then only exercise and nutritional care will be possible otherwise doctors will keep lingering and then at the end of 60 65 years we believe we have done a lot of things for society wonderful no question but most of the doctors who enter my chamber they always commit anis pura jindagi chala gaya magar apne liye kuch nahi kiya and Thank believe you, me i have at least one doctor a day thank you uh, it is said that an old dog cannot learn the new trick but by the advice by dr silpa joshi and anish chandrana we can put this into practice and start from today itself so once again thank you sudhir bhai for organizing this uh, great event and as it is said that physician heal thyself first teacher teeth heal thyself first so we must start practicing what we are preaching to our patients and i pass on uh, the podium to dr sudhir bhai and once again i must congratulate you for organizing such a wonderful event sudhir bhai please thank you thank you very much i must uh, first thank whole heartedly dr shilpa joshi and dr anish chandrana for their tremendous wonderful deliberations and th- this could be a turn or life changing moment for many of us so i really compliment both of you equally i must thank profoundly dr tiven for so well conducting uh, the question answer session as well as introducing our stalwart speakers friends as you know this is a balancing act we made many mistakes in our lives we many of us have her learned a very hard way paying lot of prices we have lost so many doctor colleagues also so we are trying to relearn the whole thing again and again so i think uh, this was the first attempt on this direction and i think the whole idea has gone successful brilliantly successful i am told there are more than 1200 delegates that's as unprecedented uh, for such a webinar so i think our job is done i hope that at least 5 10% of people pick up from this and implement in their lives our whole job would be done fantastically as has been told by me in the initial slide that a doctor lives and on an average less by 7 to 10 years than general population 
we have spoiled our quality of life we have kept on stake our wellness our peace of mind our happiness and equanimity and this balancing act will try to you know address this and lot of us, uh, uh, all of us should uh, take our own uh, uh, lessons from all this as i mentioned life is larger than medicine as a professional we must impart 30 to 35% time of our life but what we should be giving time is for our personal health to fulfill our hobbies we should give time to our family commitments to friends and other duties which we are not good at and we will really learn all this as has been mentioned we'll be talking some day on happiness some day on peace some day on stress management communication skills it takes spiritual health meditation music and all these things with all support from all of you i am very very thankful to all the delegates for remaining here till end and we wish such kind of response and motivation from all of you uh, i am once again very thankful to the team torrent right from anup dikshit to gagan atreya to chintan bhavishi amish bhai ramesh and all the other people for creating such a wonderful thing for doctors i think uh, this is also an unprecedented webinar series in that sense so let us all uh, in, do introspection and change our lives for better make it full with happiness peace love ethics professional excellence and good relationship thank you thank you so very much i hand over mic to sri gagan atreya for winding up wow what a great uh, session that's the instant uh, reaction i can give to all the panel members uh, dear dr sudhisha uh, respected panel members and delegates i consider it my proud privilege to propose a word of thanks uh, on behalf of torrent pharma uh, today's uh, it was a unique webinar on wellness for doctors and it has just been concluded i am humbled to see such a good excellent participation crossed uh, 1000 numbers like 1200 numbers it's a great attendance in this program from doctors all across specialties and all across india uh, today's program was not only informative but uh, thought provoking and really motivating today we feel uh, that we are cleared of various uh, misconceptions clear on our thoughts motivated to change our lives uh, forever i express on behalf of torrent pharma my sincere gratitude to the eminent uh, panel members for sharing their thoughts expertise with all of us and motivating us for a better life in this uh, stress time my very sincere thanks to dr sudhir shah for giving us an opportunity to be a partner in this uh, a very humble endeavor we'll be there with you sir all along thank you very much dr tiven mawa for moderating like a great teacher this uh, today's webinar thank you dr shilpa joshi uh, as usual for very nutritious talk i have been hearing <laughs> you a lot for the last many years and uh, thank you dr anish chandrana for such an energetic uh, talk i feel like uh, going down and uh, uh, working out appropriately that's what <laughs> i have learned today <laughs> my heartfelt thanks to all the distinguished delegates who took time out of their busy schedule to attend the program without whom the event wouldn't have been a success your trust on torrent encourages us to conduct more and more such programs and i'm sure your support will remain with torrent pharma in times to come thank you very much and have a wonderful uh, sunday evening thank you so much thank you uh, there is an announcement on the fourth sunday of next month we'll be having uh, one more webinar most likely every fourth uh, sunday at this point of time 5 to 6:30 we'll be having webinars so mostly we are planning on happiness we'll announce that in advance and stay with us don't go away and madam an apple a day keeps the doctor away but if the doctor is cute forget the fruit <laughs> apple yes <laughs> <laughs> thank you good day good night thank you sudhir bhai excellent thank uh, you. congratulations for great thank success you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, everyone. Thank Sir, you. we are we are close to uh, we have crossed thirteen hundred seventy seven login. Oh. Congratulations, Amit Bhai. Congratulations. Sir, 
Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. It's a whole teamwork, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Whole team is to be complimented. Wonderful. Thank nice. You, Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank madam. You. Thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much.